Hi, my name is Jacob. This is my um, tiny house in Durango, Colorado. Come check it out. Cool, this is the inside of my house. This is the living room. Got the couch, got drawers for clothes and storage shelves, big windows, makes it feel pretty open and bigger than it actually is. It's only 160 square feet plus 40 foot loft. Uh, I got this idea from my buddy's tiny house and um, I've, I built tiny houses three years professionally as the lead carpenter at Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses. Um, so I've built probably over 20 houses professionally and I brought this one together um, for what I could do affordably, but also aesthetically it looks cool and holds a high resale value. So that's where I got the idea for the interior layout. I'm able to keep things pretty open and organized in here just via the storage and, and the simplicity of the, the layout. So working your way to the other side of the house, we got the staircase, goes up to the loft where I sleep. Um, underneath the staircase, I have pretty steep stairs, but ample storage for jackets, laundry, shoes, uh, stuff for filing paperwork for work, miscellaneous stuff. I got my office desk here where I do most of my invoice and estimates for my business. It's sweet. I wanted to keep everything pretty small to keep the floor open. So desk is pretty minimal. Staircase is pretty minimal. Um, but I did go with this staircase over just a ladder because it does offer ample storage um, for whatever I need to store. Um, so this is the kitchen. It's um, really simple. You got your fridge when you walk in, um, countertop, just your basic butcher block, wide open undermount sink, makes it easy for cleaning, um, open shelving. Um, simplicity, use scraps of butcher block to make the shelving was super easy and almost free to make. Got four shelves, um, pretty decent sized stove top to cook multiple things at once. So you're having people over for a barbecue. So didn't skimp there. Got the five burner stove top. So yeah, underneath my lazy Susan here in the kitchen, I have my water heater in the back, which heats up, um, hot water for the shower, hot water for the kitchen sink. So it's super simple, on-demand heater, runs off of propane in the back here. The other utilities run off of propane as well, which is located just outside the house. So keeps everything super easy and off the grid and easy to move um, if need be. Ventilation's great in here. Got two windows for when I do cook. Um, it stays, stays pretty well ventilated. Um, connected to the bathroom, it is a smaller setup. I was trying to keep things simple and it is a smaller tiny house at only 20 feet. So this allows me to still have ample living space and also um, to, to have a kitchen and bathroom. I've always wanted um, kind of my own place. Um, it feels really cool to live in something you've built and worked so hard to create. Um, so that, that dream kind of started several years ago. I, I got a job as a carpenter with Rocky Mountain Tiny Houses. Um, within a year of working with them, I built my first tiny house on a pretty small budget. I loved living in it, lived in it for two years, was able to sell it um, and create this new house. Um, this new house is a little bigger, it's a little nicer, um, but still the same concept, just that simplicity. Um, from the house to the lifestyle I'm allowed to live now um, from living tiny. Um, yeah, we live in an incredibly expensive place and, and, and living tiny has, has allowed me to um, not only focus on my career but also focus on the cool things that this area has to offer um, and always having this home base to come back to has been really special. Um, it's also an investment, you know? A lot of people want this lifestyle, a lot of people want to live, live this way, not have to worry about debt um, or regret because they couldn't take that trip and they had to work. Um, so yeah, when I get ready to sell it and move on to the next phase of my life, it'll, 
it'll bring somebody else happiness. Um, so that's, that's a really cool aspect of it too. Um, but overall, yeah, like I said, it's just, um, this really allows me to live life to the fullest. And when I am here, it allows, it allows me to have peace of mind. Um, just knowing that everything I own is in this tiny house or in this shed. Um, and that's a, that's a really cool feeling. It gives you a lot of freedom. Cool, we're in the bathroom. It's really tiny. Um, not only because I have a tiny house, but I don't really care much about bathrooms. Um, I got my shower. It's, uh, it's fairly big, uh, 32 by 32, plenty of space for me. Um, stainless steel walls, super cool and simple idea there. Flush toilet since we are in downtown Durango. Don't have to worry about composting at this moment in time. Same deal, open shelves in the back here and a nice window for ventilation um, when you shower and stuff like that. So bathroom, super simple, but I'm in here about four minutes every day total. So didn't want to get too carried away with it. The stainless in the exterior pipe is just a idea I'd come up with um, before on my first tiny house. Um, with the stainless steel walls, you can go tight to the studs versus the shower inserts bump out a little bit. So with the stainless steel, I'm able to take full, take up the full space of the framing um, versus buying like a in stock shower insert. So that's where I got the idea for that. This is cool. Um, it's got that kind of like new modern steampunk kind of deal going on with it. So yeah, yeah, just thinking of simplicity and also resale value when I designed the kitchen and the bathroom. Cool, so this is the loft. Um, got a queen size bed, ample head space, um, a nice light on a dimmer, two windows for cross breezes. Yeah, this is where I do my sleeping and uh, late night hanging out. So got some storage up here, some shelving up here, my printer's up here, and also a TV's up here in case I wanna watch a movie or something like that before bed. So the two most popular questions I get from people are how much does it cost to build a tiny house and where do you park it once you build it? Um, this house cost me about $16,000 in materials to make. Um, that was using a lot of recycled things and finding things that were a good deal um, for me to use as, as part of the building process. So, I mean, houses can range total from eighty to $150,000, depending on what you're looking at. Um, a cool thing about tiny houses are they are incredibly simple. So even if you don't have a ton of skills in construction, they are also very easy, still also very easy to build um, by yourself. That's allowed me to build this house for under $20,000, was putting in the time on my own and having the help from my community to to build this house. Um, and then where do you park it? So we live in a super, super expensive town with not a whole lot of land in city limits anymore. Um, so lucky enough, there are places that are transitioning from nor normal trailer parks to tiny house communities. We are currently on the Animus River in downtown Durango and I lease this space in this trailer park with about 20 other tiny houses for around five to 600 bucks a month, depending on the size and the lot um, that you're renting. So if you are looking to build, you should definitely look into your local resources on where you can legally or off the grid park your house. Cool, so this is the outside of the house. We're on the patio right now. Um, I did the house similar to how I did my, my first tiny house. Uh, I love using cedar. It's expensive, but it lasts for a long time, especially here in the Southwest. Got the wainscoting of a rustic metal on the bottom, which will rust over time. Ample windows on this side of the house, the front of the house and the other side of the house. I used a lot of windows just to give it that, that bigger feel when you're on the inside. French doors, so um, kind of with the window concept of that open feel. When the doors are open, they both swing out. It feels like this is just an extension of the tiny house out here on the patio. Have an awning for snow and rain, sun shelter, 
some nice patio lights. Yeah, two part deck, got the upper part um, and the lower part. This is kind of where I eat dinner, get on my laptop, do work. It's awesome having this space. Obviously it costs a little bit extra money to build a deck, but having this space kind of doubles the size of my house, especially the seven out of 12 months in this area where it's absolutely gorgeous outside. Um, so yeah, um, love spending time outside and um, yeah, love the space. My advice for someone that's interested in living tiny is um, make sure it's right for you. Um, as cool as it is, it's not right for everybody and um, it may or may not be right for you. Um, I would do a lot of research for your area, see how easy it is to park your house, see how much that's going to cost. Um, what's your budget? Um, it's not, you know, it's not as easy and it's not as cheap to build a tiny house as maybe a lot of people think, but there are ways in which you can achieve living in a tiny house. Um, yeah, I'd say plan it out. Take your time. It took me over a year to build this house. I was working a full-time job and I would only work on it on weekends and, and, and that worked out. So I would just say use the resources that are out there. The market is, is, is full of tiny houses right now and full of tiny house companies. So there are a lot of resources out there for information both locally and around the country. Cool, well thanks for coming by my tiny house. Um, if you guys are ever watching and, and come out to Durango, Colorado, be sure to check us out at Island Cove um, in downtown Durango. Catch you guys later.